Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Ryan Franky back again with a new video. So today I'm gonna do what if Deku had to rewind part one. So let's get started. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Get right with you. Get right with you. Bad bitches, fuck up, they dismiss it. I ain't really here to take no pictures. Middle finger up. So guys, before we start, I'm gonna tell you this is a collaboration between me and my friend Biguchi Taco and also Kazuma. Uh, like, we're gonna upload uh, every one part in their channel. For me, part one, and you are like you are watching now, and Biguchi Taco part two and Kazuma part three. And if you found like find any more members there, like we will allow them to upload their parts in their channel. So yeah, let's get started. A dark green haired teen walked down the street, phone in one hand as he looked up at the latest news on heroes. A young girl with a long wavy silver holding his other hand as she nibbled on her candy apple. Iri looked up at her green haired saver. She didn't know much about the boy. She knew he was a villain. But would the villain save a girl he knew nothing about? This boy was a mystery, even, even thought he was a villain, he was never cruel to her, he was never used to hit her for anything, all he did was to care for her, it was as thought he knew everything about her. De Kuni, it is said finding a picture of the boy on poster on light post, the emerald green eyed looked at her the girl and then followed her line of sight a missing poster of a boy he once knew that boy was long gone he no needed to be it was best for everyone he ripped the poster of a uh, squash uh, like squish it into a ball and burn it with his quirk Izuku had been kidnapped, had quirks forced upon him, forced to watch his friend die, forced to see his master meet an intimidated death with his, his mother, and many more he cared for fade from existence, all by the hand of his father, the worst villain of them all. All for one. The villain had forced all his quirks into him, trying to turn his son into his ultimate weapon. Izuku didn't let his, him like succeed. He had been chosen to be the successor of the greatest hero, but he was never able to fill his shoes, and so he came back. He rewound everything. To the way it once was, he took away every memory of everyone in the world making them forget that they had have already lived the five years. If he were to give back those memories to many people it would the like looking into one future but to the people who knew him it would be a life that had him. Izuku had become a hero to save people but he couldn't save them and so with his uh, second chance he would protect them in the shadows. His first act was to save Eri. He retrained all his quirk from his previous life and took Eri from Shisaki and known as Overall. With this Sir Knight I won't die. He still had once for all, like one for all, but with everything reversed, there would be two to hold the power Mirio was bound to inherit. His, his plan was simple, he would change everything and so no one would suffer. With Eri by his side, a medical mask on the found themselves at the scenes where a villain was attacking. He remembered this as clearly as yesterday. Actually, he was re relieving this. Kamui was about to capture the villain and then Mike Lady swooped in and knocked out the villain. Izuku chuckled at the sight of Kamui Wood feeling down. If he only knew that them both would be power couple in just a year. Izuku had work to, to do today 
Bakugo was going to get captured by a villain today. He needed to bring Eri to her school. He helped the girl with controlling her quirk. She had enough control over it to interact with people. After dropping off the girl, he went about his day. He was headed to a villain organization known as Drifters. They were not pity villains, they were villains with a reason. He accepted people who had been like wrongfully accused those they were looked down by the society. They're quirkless. Those all like told that they were villains because of their quirks. Those that didn't have a fair life and so forth. Those that didn't want to be villains but had no choice to become one. These were victims of the superhuman society he wanted to protect. Thought he may say villains they were pretty much a vigilante group. But they were villains nonetheless. Taking the laws into their own hands where the heroes can venture to. Izuku wondered what he would do for the day. Maybe visit his mother. Thought he say visit. It was mostly meaning turning invisible and walking into his mother hospital room and watching her. As creepy as it may seem, it was the only thing he could do to be closer to her. Ever since he ran away, his mother had broken down and hospitalized. She had slowly been getting better thanks to her a friend she made in the hospital and of all people it was Todoro King's mother both were getting better. Izuku teleported into the room placing the, a bundle of fresh flour in the vase. His mother was with Rei Todoroki when he did. Inko, don't you think you should tell someone about this? Ray said, looking slightly terrified. No, no, it's fine. There is no harm done. Inko replied with a smile. Izuku stood in the corner and watched the two women chat. Who do you think is sending you these flowers and such a way? Ray asked, still worried. I'm not sure, but I have a hunch, but it can't be true. Mom, your hunches are always right. Just then, yo, Inko, I'm here. Miss, uh, like Mistress Bakugo, come, uh, comes best like slamming in. Uh, is it okay to let someone like that in a mental hospital? Izuku wondered, holding his chest. He thought his heart was going to jump out. Oi, Ray san nice to see you. Uh, the green-haired woman chuckled and the white-haired woman like smiled gray like gleefully. Izuku no like noted that uh, him Bakugo and Todoroki were male versions of their mothers. Though thought Todoroki still had half red and blue green eyes and the scar if he his whole head was white and both eyes gray and had no scar he would be like just his mom oh the mystery man bought you flowers again said miski with a sly smile it's not like that inko says then who is bringing your flowers she asked i think it's izuku inko says with a smile ray looked at her with a smile and took her hand Mitsuki looked uh, like hers. Izuku did run away two years ago. Rei knew how she felt. Her eldest son did run away as well. Bakugo is going to UA next spring, uh, isn't he? Inko asked. Yeah, he, that brat had strong uh, on being the number one hero. I believe my youngest is also going to attend, Rei said looking down. They would have been good friends, Inko said sadly. If you only knew mom, Izuku thought Izuku left before it could get any more heart clenching. He teleported himself to a cafe. He checked the time few more hours before he could go pick up Eri. He sighted and decided to find something to pass the time. He decided to check the news on information about what his group was doing. First to pop up said the villain. Uh, organization known as the Drifters were responsible for the murder of the serial killer. The second said that the Drifter had bought down mafia gang, slaughtering all the members. Izuku didn't like killing but he does his research and had already lived this life. He 
knows what these people do so he sent his group after them many of them had suffered from them as well it was cleaning the street and revenge izuku made it to always track every member most were not acti active because they were under his protection these were people who had lost hope in everyone and the family of his member the people in his group were of all ages these were a victim of society his complex brain could easily track every single one of them easy as breathing he still needed to mark a few people his friend and also his family so guys i'm gonna wrap it up like right here um like this is the part first part so the second part is gonna be on big gucci taco channel so yeah if you enjoyed this episode please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and i catch you in another video